Good evening. Welcome to Reality Check. Well, who says that politics in India is boring? If you ever thought that politics is boring, well, today is a perfect example of how politics, winter may be here, but politics is really seeming to be heating up because we've had all sorts of really interesting developments from the morning. First of all, this, the Prime Minister, uh, among those, when going to Gujarat, the, the Gaurav, uh, you know, the Gujarat Gaurav Divas is again being celebrated. Big rally out there. Prime Minister coming out very strongly saying that the Congress is against development and also saying that the Congress party in general and the Gandhi family in particular has been always systematically biased against Gujarat. Quick glimpse, this is what the Prime Minister had to say. When the Gujarat comes to Gujarat, they get to get a lot of pain. They get a lot of pain. For the family and for this party, Gujarat all right, then, if you thought that wasn't dramatic enough, you have Pawan Varma, senior JDU leader, since this morning has put out two or three tweets uh, which are seeming to express a certain amount of disagreement with what is happening on the Gujarat elections. Why was the date deferred? This is the tweet that he put out. Why was that, uh, why were the Gujarat uh, you know, elections uh, dates deferred and why is it that we don't know the answer to that? Also today, Mani Shankarayar writing a column really saying that Rahul Gandhi is starting to fight back and push back very aggressively and that's perhaps changing the entire landscape right now. And if you thought that wasn't enough, you have a BJP leader coming out with this particular comment on the Taj Mahal. <laughs> All right, so so lots to discuss, and we actually happen to have many of the key people right here with us on, on reality check today. Pavan Varma is with us, Mani Shankarayar is with us, Professor Rakesh Sena is joining us, Sandeep Singh, uh, author, RSS supporters also with us, Shahid Siddiqui uh, uh, with us on this panel as well. So thank you all so much for being with us. Pavan Varma, if I could just start off with you first, because you've really created a lot of, uh, you created a bit of a stir with your tweets since this morning. Um, your, what, what seems to be an open disagreement with the BJP, which is of course your new ally, has got people wondering whether you're on the verge of, you know, parting ways. You're not happy with what Nitish, what Nitish Kumar has done, and you think this is setting the step for a parting of ways. Uh, would you help us and interpret your statement? No, I think Vikram, I raised issues of national concern, which the JDU, as led by Mr. Nitish Kumar, having an identity of its own and an ideology of its own is entitled to ask. The first related to is a question actually directed to the election commission, so I don't see how any party can take umbrage to it. The question was that when always in the past for assembly elections clubbed within a period of six months, you've announced dates for all the states and enforced the model code of conduct. Why is it that this time you've done so for Himachal Pradesh and not done so for Gujarat? But that and comment, Pavan, sir, that, that comment is interesting because democracy. that's exactly the point that the rest of the opposition, well, not the rest of the opposition, you're not in the opposition theoretically anymore, but that's exactly the point that the opposition is making and the Congress in particular has been saying that this has happened specifically to help out the BJP right now. Now, of course, you know, uh, uh, that's why the, the postponement has happened. It, it, so it you seem to be matter. echoing what the opposition is saying, which is why there's so much interest in your comments. No, because I think... I would I would request you, Vikram, not to see this in the binary of uh, the ruling party or opposition. The election commission is a national institution. Democracy is about such institutions being strengthened and being allowed to retain their impartiality and autonomy. And as a citizen, and and as as part of the ideology of this JDU, we have always believed the election commission should work impartially. And to my mind, it's not announcing the dates for Gujarat 
remains inexplicable and I sought credible answers for it. After all, earlier this year, you had elections to five states and you announced simultaneously the poll dates and the model code of conduct. Why was it not done this year, this time for Gujarat and Himachal okay. Pradesh? This is a question Pavan, which Pavan from any political party who believes Pavan Varma, it is uh, the season the of dissent. Which are, of the it is the season of dissent, which is why I am asking you. You have seen prominent BJP leaders like Yashwan Sinha and Arun Shori coming out and you know challenging the, whatever the narrative uh, is. So I am asking you, is this a step in that same direction? Is Pavan Varma about to stand up and saying, I don't agree with what the JDU has done. I don't like this alliance. I don't like the way things are going. I don't like the way the BJP has been treating the JDU or Nitish Kumar or both. Uh, is any of that, is this the subtext to what you have been writing? No, I think what you will see is that Pavan Varma, in conformity his, of his understanding of the JDU's ideology, as crafted by Nitish Kumar, will continue to raise issues which are of national concern and do that without any inhibition. Because the JDU has its own identity, even though it may be part of any coalition. And that is what needs to be done today. And okay. that is why I raised the question on the Global Hunger Index. Yeah, that, I, I, mean, I was I just about to come to that. That's a pretty scathing indictment that you have just put out of the BJP saying that, you know, I mean, you, you, you were, it was like an opposition tweet saying, look what's happening, we fall into number 100 on the global index. Okay, you're saying you're just posing questions uh, in, in the normal manner. Manish and Garay, let me just drag you in and before I get everyone else in and also turn our attention to the Taj and such like stuff, you heard what the Prime Minister said today and that's why I'm saying that the political rhetoric and temperature seem to be going up a little bit. The Prime Minister today in Gujarat very clearly says that the Congress party and the Gandhi family in particular have been systematically biased against Gujarat and that you have an allergy to development. Rubbish. But then that's his stock in trade, rubbish. He talks nonsense, he's talked it again and I'm sure that he can do nothing but talk nonsense because there is no sense in his head. I think this is the worst Prime Minister we've ever had and the bias is not against Gujarat or the Gujarati people. It's against a chief minister whom they have chosen to elect again and again. And it has been to their disadvantage. And what we are doing now is since the tide is clearly changing, the biggest story, in fact, you haven't mentioned, 1.93 lakh votes is the margin by which the Congress candidate has won in Gurdaspur, which was won four times in succession by the BJP. So Although there Punjab, is a, Punjab, the Congress did win earlier. Of in the course year. it so did, but, but, Punjab but not is a, by is a, Punjab is, is one of those pockets of strength for the Congress party. But right not now. by 1.93 lakh votes. Okay. I think one lakh has been won by Amarinda, and 0.93 lakh has been lost by Modi. Okay, I mean I did say that the rhetoric is getting increasingly strong. So let me get Rakesh and <laughs> in and Sandeep Singh. Um, the word, I mean, you heard, you, I, I don't have to paraphrase for you what you just heard Manish Shankar Ayer saying. He clearly feels that the Prime Minister's remarks in Gujarat today were over the top. How would you respond? Rakesh and are you first? I am not surprised when Manish Shankar Ayer yeah, uh, described as, Prime uh, Minister's speech. Sandeep, one second. I'm just going to get Rakesh, then I I'll come to you. Democracy. Yeah, Rakesh. In democracy, there is binary, but the binary should not go to such an extent that we are rejecting each other with a neg highly negative adjective, which I consider unparliamentary. You know, Prime Minister's today's speech is a historic speech. In that speech, he corrected the political discourse. And he said that political discourse should not go to the extent which Mani Sankar here is now, now, now this, uh, exhibiting here. That we should not oppose each other in, in a manner that we are rejecting a, a democracy itself. Secondly, he has also narrated the political history of India. And he narrated how Janasang to Bharati Janata Party, the party has traveled. This is a very important narrative Prime Minister has given to the nation, how BJP and Janasang in the past no, has been That I get, Rakesh, but if I could just ask you, if you're saying that the rhetoric shouldn't go too far, so, so Rakesh, if you're saying that the rhetoric shouldn't go too far, the Prime Minister did, in a sense, say that the Congress Party has always systematically been no, biased I, against Gujarat and Gujaratis. Isn't that also a rather strong remark to make? From Sardar I'm, Patel I'm, to Marathi Bikram, Desai Bikram, to Madhav Singh Solanki. Bikram, you mentioned you have, them all. You, you, Bikram, 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 you have so many questions to me, but let me complete. I, I have to give me 30, 30 seconds uninterrupted. You look, I am giving one example. The first 
एंटी एस्टेब्लिशमेंट मूवमेंट इन द फॉर्म ऑफ द मास मूवमेंट वाज नव निर्माण समिति इन गुजरात देन बाबू भाई पटेल गवर्नमेंट वाज फॉर्म विद द कॉलिशन ऑफ द जनसंघ एंड कांग्रेस ऑर्गेनाइजेशन लेड बाय मोरारजी भाई देसाई एंड बाबूलाल बाबूलाल पटेल वाज चीफ मिनिस्टर ऑफ गुजरात एंड देन द कांग्रेस द वे कांग्रेस सप्रेस द मूवमेंट द मोस्ट अनडेमोक्रेटिक मैनर द वे मोरारजी देसाई वाज डिफेम्ड एट द इंटरनेशनल लेवल नाउ नरेंद्र मोदी इज बीइंग डिफेम्ड बाय द बाय मनीषंकर पीपल लाइक मनीषंकर अय्यर इन पाकिस्तान एंड अदर प्लेसेस एंड इट इज इट इज अप टू द मनीषंकर अय्यर ही इज ही सॉलिसिटिंग सपोर्ट ऑफ पाकिस्तान टू डिसमेंटल नरेंद्र मोदी इज गवर्नमेंट आई थिंक इन डेमोक्रेसी यू हैव राइट टू अपोज बट यू डोंट यू डोंट हैव राइट टू रिजेक्ट प्राइम मिनिस्टर हैज राइटली पॉइंटेड आउट आर यू टेकिंग कांग्रेस पार्टी हैज गिवन द सेकंड रेट आई आई थिंक पाकिस्तानी हेल्प टू डेमोक्रेसी आई आई डोंट नीड पाकिस्तानी हेल्प टू हिज Demolish the BJP because Modi himself no, is Manisangar quite enough to demolish the BJP. He, he was in Pakistan. He solicited support from Pakistan to dismantle Narendra Modi's government. The truth I think remains the truth on this personal. side of the border Behaving or like on that, that side like of the border. Extra national activity. I did not activity. seek Pakistani help okay. because Pakistan can give us no help. It's only we who have to end this wretched regime. All right. Can I, Sandeep? Before I get you in, talking about. how far are we going to go in political rhetoric because even from the start of this program to now there seems to be a certain sliding now when you are having people like sangeet som who at the end of the day is a mla belonging to the bjp who comes out and calls the taj mahal a blot on indian culture what does that show about the direction that we are heading to and by the way after that came out i first questioned that and said is anybody saying that is is obviously you know lots there lost the plot then i said next step is going to be that people are going to start asking for the demolition of the taj and i was saying that you know slightly facetiously and before you knew it i was horrified to find that there actually people coming in and saying yes the taj mahal should be demolished which which really makes me wonder as to which direction we are headed in um, do you think we are going a bit far here uh, we have to be very careful and i think people say a party has said it's individual opinion Uh, as far as the second part goes yes agree if you look uh, you have uh, we have i believe mani shankar iyer ji is on the panel he himself went to remove great veer savarkar's plaque from andaman so we have people on the panel who have gone on to distort history you know so if uh, but uh, mr shom has just made a statement we have yeah, mani so shankar iyer has gone and removed i'm going to i'm going to tell you what so the plaque. official bjp reaction the official bjp reaction to that is this this is what was stated by nalin kohli this is the official stance of the bjp This must be his and should be taken as his individual opinion. The Taj Mahal is a definite part, an important part of our culture, our history. It cannot be erased. Okay, so BJP is saying that okay, it is it is his own opinion, not everybody. But I just want to ask all of you: Is this the direction we're going to start moving towards to try and try and redress or rephrase history? Uh, Shahid Siddiqui, are you somewhat concerned by what's happening? The very fact that. we having a discussion here on prime time television about people saying that the taj is a blot on indian culture if you would ask me 10 years ago that we that the day would ever come i would have been surprised so we should have number one ignored som sangeet soms comment because it's not worth discussing on a national channel taj mahal is not about taj except for the fact that on, that on a number of let, national let channels finish, let me communal finish. rhetoric let me finish. like this is yes, going yes, around yes, every yes. night yes th that is happening but taj mahal is not about shah jahan or it's not about mughals it is about india and it is about the you know zenith we reached in every field it is representative of the best india could produce in thousands of years and that is reflected by taj and i am very surprised and shocked at the bjp reaction that they want to follow azam khan is azam khan their leader do they want to really want to follow what azam khan said it is really strange they are behaving like isis isis demolished many of the ancient you know dargahs in syria in iraq they the taliban demolished the banyan buddha the so they want to do the that so same they, they, so they are trying to be the hindu iss or hindu taliban it is and they want to follow azam khan it's a, it's a blot the comment is a so blot on this country and all the all that is decent in the okay. i'm going to come i'm going to come sandeep the so point confused. being made is that surely Can we i come on this quickly yeah uh, pavan pavan varma in fact i am going to come come to you on this i'm just going to ask sandeep one question and i'm coming to you pavan varma sandeep surely but the azam khan says it or somebody else says it we should be above things like this we don't want to become the taliban 
Look at what Taliban did. They went around demolishing Buddha statues in Bami. And then what happened to here, Taliban and ISS? Yeah, also but, see that. but here, I mean, the very fact that we will call something like the Taj Mahal a blot on Indian see, culture is I, something that should I, make all of us rather concerned. Sandeep? See, I said very clearly that it should not be dismantled. I don't belong to... Uh, but uh, uh, what I said is that ki we have people who have made such similar comments before. So I'm quite used to such comments, you know. It's not that ki somebody for the first time has made it. So we have people across political parties making such comments and best we should ignore it.